Next up, we got. I want to say this word, bro. The anom. Hold on, we gonna use the sounding out trick. Learn school, okay. The anonymity. Anonymity. Anon. Midi. On no, bro. I stay in school. Stay in school. Stay in school. Okay. But anyways, the blank of John. Bro, what is up with these? Like, oh my, come on, bro. Give me some regular words. Like, I'm not that smart. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that smart, bro. Anyways, look. We got JCS. All right. We got JCS. These public. Uh, and I'm about to say play free ghost. He's uh, what's it called? Um, criminal psychology. We got the criminal psychology man. You all know who JCS is. If you haven't watched my other JCS, click the um link in the bio. Am I what am I talking about? Link in the bio. What? Oh my god. Anyways, I have a playlist for criminal psychology. Look, it's gonna be in the description and my comment section, or you just look it up on my channel. Sorry, yo, I'm all I don't know, bro. Anyways, hey. Let's see what it be time. On February 15th of 1993, the northern city of Liverpool, England, would bear witness to one of the most shocking and horrific cases in its history. Police on Merseyside say that two-year-old James Bulger, who disappeared from a shopping precinct at the weekend, was horribly murdered and then dumped on a railway line. They say that someone must know the identity of the two boys who took James from the precinct. Inch by inch, the police have searched the railway line where two-year-old James Bulger's body was found yesterday. The scene is still protected from the elements. All right, the All right bro, you gonna kill a little kid. Somebody kill the little kid and put him on the railroad track? Bro, you are a psychopath. His uncle had identified him. It had been spotted earlier by four schoolboys playing. The blurred images of two youths seen taking James away are now all over the city. The public say detectives hold the key to finding them. Where's two little the kids that did that? Wait, what? Then his abandoned body was hit by a train. We know it is a murder inquiry. Ah, bro, what the fuck, bro? We're going to find James and return him to his parents. It is horrific what has taken place, and there must somewhere be somebody who will know the identity of the two boys who were seen with James. James's blue and mustard hood, seen here in a security video, has now been recovered. It had been missing from his clothing, but was found nearby. Police have set up a temporary base in the shopping centre. They're warning parents that other children could be vulnerable. For goodness sake, keep tight hold of your children. Poor James only went missing from his mother for a matter of seconds, and he'd gone and disappeared. It was a warning heeded as parents picked up their children from school. I said to him that if he just knows me hands, then, you know, an old man's going to take him and all that. It's on your own doorstep, isn't it? I mean, I come to Strand every day with my kids. Of course, it's right, it's right with everybody. The shadow of this murder is hanging heavily over Liverpool. As flowers built up around the scene, James's family have spent the day being counselled by specially trained officers. Dozens of bunches of flowers have been laid in response to a crime whose shadow is hanging heavily over the city. The appalling murder of a defenceless toddler. James suffered truly horrific injuries, said the police, before his body was dumped on a railway and hit by a train. The discovery of his remains has led to a massive public response. Detectives are tonight studying the evidence so far accumulated. But police still haven't traced these two youths, photographed leading James away by a security camera. Inch by inch, officers have searched the line today, trying to establish the exact sequence and timing of events. The inquiries have gone on all day, and they've been going on all evening. The search as urgent as ever for the vital clue that will lead the police to whoever killed a helpless two-year-old. Today, the police... Two years old?! ...announced the breakthrough in their inquiries. Following the abduction of James Bulger from the New Sound Shopping Precinct in Bootle on Friday the 12th of February 1993, and the subsequent findings of his body on the railway line in Walton on Sunday the 14th of February, two boys aged 10 years from Walton area have been arrested and are currently being interviewed by Merseyside Police at police stations on Merseyside. 
Today's announcement came after hundreds of calls to the incident room overnight following the first screening on television last night of an enhanced video photograph of the two youths seen with James. It can no longer be shown for legal reasons. Bro, like, these little kids killed the two-year-old, bro, Almost like... 27 years later, this surveillance image remains etched in the minds of the millions familiar with the case of James Boger. Wait, they still never the found it? Of February 12th, 1993, 10-year-olds John Venables and Robert Thompson would enter a shopping mall in the northern part of Liverpool with the intention of kidnapping a small child. Something they attempted not once, but twice. Inside a department oh, store, fuck? a woman noticed that two boys were trying to get her two-year-old son's attention. Moments later, she realized he was missing. The woman began calling his name and ran outside, where she found Venables and Thompson beckoning the boy to follow them. When Venables saw the mother, he told the boy to go back to her, and they both vanished. Mere luck had saved that child, but also sealed the terrible fate of another. Soon after the aborted abduction, Venables and Thompson were loitering around a candy stand when they noticed two-year-old James Bulger by the door of a nearby butcher's shop. With Bulger's mother momentarily distracted, they got the toddler to come with them. Venables then took him by the hand and led him away. James and his abductors were caught by a surveillance camera leaving the mall at 3.42 p.m. By this time, James's mother, Denise, was panicking. She quickly found mall security personnel and described her son and what he was wearing. They announced the boy's name over the loudspeakers, but there was no sign of him, and he was then reported missing at the local police station. After the boys had led James away from the mall, he began crying out for his mother. They ignored him and continued down to a secluded area near a canal where they dropped him on his head and left him on the ground crying. A woman passing by noticed the child but did nothing. The boys then called for James to come, and he still followed. His forehead was bruised and cut, causing his abductors to pull his jacket hood over his head to hide the injury. They then walked away from the canal and through a residential street, where one witness later reported noticing a small child crying while being forcefully led by two older boys. She didn't report the incident, but gave a statement five days later. I've heard people saying, why did someone do this? Why did someone do that? But, you know, now the guilt... Bro, have you ever seen something out of normal, bro? And you, you like it's something. It's like I know it's, it's like you get a good feeling like this is wrong. Like you see something that's out of the, out of the normal. You know what I'm saying? Even though sometimes you might want to just stay out of people's business, but bro, like you know what I'm saying? If it's out of normal for real, like bro, call the police. Just call police. God, I watch them. I, I've got to look out this window every time. I see these kids. I go to bed and I see these kids. A second witness also noticed the trio while driving, but only reported the incident when the story hit the front page of the national news three days later. I went to the police that same day on the Monday and reported the incident. And I said to the police at that stage, you know, I hope that it wasn't him because I couldn't live with the thought that I could have done something about it. At some time between 5.45 and 6.30 p.m., Thompson and Venables brought the exhausted two-year-old to a railway. When they arrived, the boys hesitated, perhaps reconsidering what they were about to do, and briefly turned away from the embankment. But then they both turned back toward the privacy of the area, and the brutal torture and murder of James Bulger occurred. Eventually, the two boys placed James's dead body across the train tracks in hopes of making the whole thing look like an accident. They then abandoned the scene before a train came and severed the toddler in two. With little to go on, Bulger's parents were initially the prime suspects, but when police saw the CCTV footage from the shopping mall, the story went nationwide and the search for Bulger intensified. His body was discovered two days after his disappearance. An anonymous phone call to the police then implicated John Venables and Robert Thompson as the killers. The caller told police that Venables and Thompson were both absent from school on the Friday of the abduction. Both boys were then taken in for questioning. He said that the two of you were in the strand and that you saw the little boy. He never. He never. I forgot the most truth. God knows the truth and he tell me that he never. He was too scared. He was probably too scared. And he said that you took him by the hand and led him out of the strand shop. He never. He's a liar. Oh. 
So it's like, what, like, y'all just wanted to kill a little kid? Like, what, what's the logic behind this? Like, what, what was y'all trying to do? Like, I just wanted to kill a little boy? Like, what? Did you go with him after that? The, the reservoir where that orange spotted us. Is young James walking with you by this time, or are you still having to pull him? He was walking with us. Was he upset, or had he made friends with you? No, he was all nice. I know the truth. I believe I know the truth. I was there. That's right. You waved. Correct, but I know there's a lot of things that have gone on. Yeah, well, do you know it was me that killed them? It wasn't. I never even killed them. <laughs> Chloe. What? Try and stop. Right, let's, we've got. We're getting there, aren't we? We're getting to the truth now. Yeah, all well, I'm gonna end up getting. He ought to keep going up and down, like. He's got just the baby man. Just both trying to strength. Then we let him go strength. Did he? When he was like a chair, he let him go. And you were with John then? You're shaking your head. You're shaking your head. Yeah, I told him to take him back. You did what? I don't You crying and shit, you just killed the little kid, bro. The kid cannot stay alive now, bro. Like come on, bro. Going towards the police station. I never killed him. 
The trials of John Venables and Robert Thompson commenced nine months later, and they were both convicted of murder, making them the youngest to be found guilty of the offense in over 250 years. Two days later, on the, day the 22nd of February, the boys were taken to South Sefton Magistrates Court in Bootle for a hearing. Dumb ass kids, bro. Playing too much GTA. Media interest in the case. Playing too much Call of Duty. Television crews and photographers from all over the world came to Bootle to get a shot of the boys. Public anger, too, had been building for some time in Liverpool, both against the boys and the intrusiveness of the media. A menacing crowd gathered outside the court, waiting for the boys to come out. Where is this at? Everybody got accents. Yo, these things are men's societies. All right, so who is saying let go? The kids? As the boys left in the transit van, bricks were being thrown. People were running up to the side of the transit van. What? Y'all want him to get a... What the, the fuck is wrong with y'all? Huh? Y'all want them to... Bro, they... Bro, they want them to... What? Bruh. What is going on right now? Why do they want them to get free? They throwing bricks at the cars and shit like y'all niggas is crazy, bro. There's been a backlash against horror videos as Britain searches for answers. Oh, it's Britain. The James Bulger oh, it's in England. Life sentences on his schoolboy killers. The case has already split the church and the government in a damaging row over who's to blame. But there's alarm now with a death threat from an uncle of little James. New flowers today marked a death threat to what? As politicians and churchmen blamed one another in their search for reasons for the murder. Feelings everywhere were running high today, nowhere more than in a phone in on BBC television's Good Morning with Anne and Nick programme, when James Bulger's uncle, who was the one called to identify the child's body, threatened to kill the two boys. Looks to me like everyone's making excuses for them, and there is no excuses, Anne. He took the child, he bumped them to death, and he don't stay. In jail, but, uh, we'll be waiting. And when we get older, we'll kill. Why did they do it? Yeah, but, well, oh shit, that nigga mad. Okay, I'll be mad too though, no cap. Obviously we can have that. Call. I'll be mad too. I will kill the fuck out of them too. The comments some MPs struggling to find any kind of action to express their revulsion turned on horror videos that might have influenced the boys. The children had watched too many fucking scary movies. I, I say so many scary movies was too much Call of Duty, all that shit. Video shop straight after the killing. A month before, John Venable's father had rented Child's Play 3. A main fucking too much Chucky, bro. Oh my god. Showing a demonic doll being battered to death. See, that's what it is, too. I, I ain't gonna lie. Chucky, my favorite, uh, Chucky and Jeepers Creepers. But I wouldn't go like, come on now. This is why chill. That's why they. This is why I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pause no more. But this is why they say, um, the movies are for 18 and up, 21 and up, because they little kids are not supposed to watch these 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 killings and and Chucky kill these kids. Like they're not supposed to watch. They're not. Their their mind can't comprehend. I think this is real life. I think this is real, bro. This is why. This is why they do that. The police said they had no evidence to suggest it. However, responding to criticism, Sky Television said it's dropping tomorrow night's planned screening of Child's Play 3, while another video chain said they were burning 10,000 copies. Damn. His murderers this century were driven at speed to an indefinite future in custody, detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. The sentence that had been passed is the only sentence that the court could pass. They recognized that, but no sentence the court could pass would ever bring James back, and nor in their view, could it ever properly punish those two boys for what they did. They were both given an indefinite sentence, which has no maximum, but has a minimum determined on a case-by-case -case basis. In this case, it was just eight years, and despite public outrage, they would end up serving this minimum sentence, and were each released in 2001, when they were both 18 years old. What? 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 should expire today. He says the boys, both 18, are genuinely remorseful, and further detention wouldn't be constructive. It was a terrible offence, but they were only children. They were only just wow. children. Wow. responsible when it occurred. Damn. To take into account the undoubted progress which they've made. James Bulger's mother, Denise Fergus, said she was shocked and disgusted by the decision. It means her son's killers could be out in a matter of months. I'll never forget what it's on another. 
Oh, I actually, no, not an uncle about to kill the ass. The hateful <laughs> since my grave. They were given new identities and granted legal anonymity for life due to the public fury that surrounded the case and the danger of citizens hunting them down in order to take vengeance. In 2010, John Venables was taken back to prison for downloading child pornography. Of oh my, bro! Like, <laughs> oh my god, bro! What the fuck? What am I watching right now? What is this? Hunting them down in order huh? to take vengeance. In 2010, John Venables was taken back to prison for downloading child pornography of male toddlers. He served three years in. I didn't hear that part. Okay, so now he's downloading gay child porn. I, it, it, it. Uh, it don't get worse prison than that, bro. Like you just down tremendous, bro. Only to be brought back again four years. Oh my God, bro. Was taken back to prison for downloading child pornography of male toddlers. He served three years in prison and was released in 2013, only to be brought back again four years later after a pedophile manual that provided instructions on having sex with kids was discovered on his computer. He was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. I'm going for you. <laughs> Just put him in jail and throw away the key. I don't under bro. They keep letting him get out and they keep taking him right back. Bro, he he's literally obsessed with little little boys. He's literally obsessed with little boys, bro. Not little girls, little little boys. Like, oh my god, he had a freaking. First of all, okay, this one makes it worse. Who's? I I'm make sure my my camera straight, bro. All right, who is out here making? Um, who is out here making? manuals on how to have sex with little boys who is out here making uh pedophile manuals who that's what i want to know first okay so first of all you bought that or however you obtained it i'm pretty sure he bought it so somebody out here is making pedophile whatever okay so you have that and now you go back to jail every single four years and they keep letting them out every three years like I don't, I did like, it's probably because they're out of the country. I think out of the country, I think, I think if, it, if it was here, it'd be worse. I think that if you had them trying to do all that shit, like, they'd keep you in that motherfucker, like, they're going to keep you in, in USA. But, I don't know, bro. Out of the country, bro. For downloading child pornography of male toddlers. He served three years in prison and was released in 2013, only to be brought back again four years later. After a pedophile manual that provided instructions on having sex with kids was discovered on his computer, he was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. I'm more fearful now that someone is going to mistake someone else's venables and do someone who's innocent harm. That's my biggest fear now. Do you trust that the authorities can monitor him properly? No, definitely not. They couldn't they monitor him the first time. What makes them so sure they're going to monitor him now? They haven't got a clue. I think they're not doing their jobs properly. They've got jobs there to do, they're not doing them. You know, they let him slip through the fingers the first time now, so no doubt it's, it's going to happen again. He got away with so much, he's going to think he's untouchable again and he's going to go and do even worse. I no, nigga, no, no, no. That nigga's a psychopath. He's a psychopath. I'm liking this video. Jesus Christ, bro. Whoa, that's why I say you've seen them before. Are you serious? Oh. oh my God. Okay. Yeah, bro. This is bad, bro. This is very bad. Like this, this, ah, this is disturbing. All that. I, 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 I. Don't ask me, bro. Don't, don't ask me. Hey man, y'all like comment subscribe. Comment on me yet too next man. Follow me on Instagram that's where I'm most active at. Be on the grind in 1K man. I'm out.